seven years. Who remembers when we were in the little side room? Yeah, you were there. We were like, we're going to the big room one day. And here we are at the big room. Yeah, right. Before that, we were at Madison Street Theater, and there was like seven people and Kathy. And I was like, really, Kathy, I know it could work. <laughs> It took us a little while to build it, but, it was, but it's awesome, you know what I mean? Every, every night, no matter how many people showed up, you know, that people got to share their stories. And sharing stories is so important. It's so important for us to share our stories now more than ever. And I love this song, this theme song, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us, because it reminds me of all the stories from my childhood. Because we were like bad kids. And that was like our theme song, like, nothing's gonna stop us. We don't care about rules. My parents had rules, they were really strict parents. But then I had five older sisters and two younger brothers, and we had our own rules, you know? And our rules, like, if, we, if you broke my parents' rules, you were in trouble, but if you broke your siblings' rules, you were dead. You know, you'd be killed. And the rules were, number one, break all the rules. <laughs> number two, don't get caught. Number three, don't rat anybody out. And number four, if you get caught, you're on your own. You're, it's a solo mission. <laughs> So, um, so we were pretty bad kids, but to tell you the truth, I don't really blame it on, on us because we were like fed and raised by like horrible stories. As children, I don't know if you guys remember, but our generation grew up in some horrific stories. Like in my mind, when my parents told us some of the stories or read some of the stories, I would think like, was that supposed to be a horror movie? Like did somebody write horror movies and then children's stories and then just switch them by accident? Like, uh, rock by baby. I mean, it starts early, right? rock by baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Now, when the wind breaks, the cradle will fall. This is like a goth poetry thing. This is not a baby lullaby. And down will come baby, cradle and all. Good night. What the fuck? What the fuck? Like, if you asked a baby, like, what's your nightmare? Well, I haven't been alive too long, but you know, I guess if I had to choose, it would be probably falling out of my cradle. Great, well, what about if you fell out of your cradle from the top of a tree? <laughs> like, that's just horrible. Oh, so the baby's scared now, so we'll pray, we'll pray with the baby. Okay, this was one of our childhood prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. What the fuck? What the everlasting fuck? It's like, what happened to like, may angels watch over you and all be well? No, let's talk about your death right before you go to bed. <laughs> Horrible. And this, we were just like, we just ran along with it. Like, I guess this is normal. Our parents are not to be trusted with our well-being for sure. And uh, my mom was a big reader. She would tell us stories all the time. And the other stories that kind of confused me was the cat in the hat. I don't remember if you guys remember the cat in the hat, but the cat in the hat was so awesome because it was like, it was like these kids were like left alone in the house for the day when the mom went out. And they're like, be good. And then like this cat comes in with thing on one and thing two. And he's like, you guys want to have some fun? <laughs> we're going to fuck up your house. We're going to fuck it up. And the kids are like, uh, like they don't even know what to say. And the fish in the bowl is like, no, you can't fuck up our house. Like mom's coming home soon. You have that Debbie Downer friend who's like, you can't smoke in your locker morning. You're gonna get caught. <laughs> it's like, I have a 50-50 chance of getting caught. And my chances are, I'm gonna take the odds. So, um, cat in the hat. And, um, and then there was, do you remember the, the little gingerbread man? Oh yeah. Who wrote that? Like, a mom can't have a baby, a farmer's wife, so she makes a gingerbread man. Like, that's never gonna work out well. And she puts him in the oven, and then the little fucker jumps out of the oven, he's like, fuck you, I'm out of here! You can't catch me, I'm the fucking gingerbread man! <laughs> it's like, and they follow the gingerbread man, and he's running from all these things, and so you sort of, I don't know, I fell in love with the gingerbread man, I was like, he's hot. <laughs> And then at the end of the story, he's like, I need a ride across the river. And he like makes friends with the fox and the fox like, yeah, this is gonna work out. And then the fox eats him. And as a child, I was like, that's sad. <laughs> that's so sad. It's very disturbing. What was the message? Don't trust people. Don't trust people ever. And don't go to sleep because your soul could be taken from you. <laughs>
So if we're all fucked up, we have lots of excuses to be so. Still, I really appreciate my parents raising us on telling stories and reading stories. And um, I have to tell you one last story before I bring out our first storyteller. My, my siblings and I would make up games. And some of them are really bad games. <laughs> bad games. And one game was so bad um, that uh, it only lasted run, one round. And this game was that we would all sit around our dining room table, and there was all my siblings and then all of our neighborhood friends. And the game was who could scream fire the loudest. <laughs> It was when, like, Guinness Book of World Records was out and everyone was trying to do something the most, you know? Like, who can hold their breath the longest or who can stand on one foot? And it was like, who could scream fire the loudest? Which was a great idea, except for that we must have forgotten that we live next door <laughs> to the chief of the fire department, Mr. Masai. Yeah, big mistake, because Mr. Masai was, like, fucking part pirate. Maybe he was completely pirate. He, like, had a limp and he had a twitchy eye and he spit curse words and phlegm. That was basically Mr. Masai. And he came bolting in our house and he was like, what are you doing? And we, we were like gingerbread men. We like ran, we were like, hide! We all ran and we hid and he was like, get your asses down here. Remember parents talk like that to the guy, get your fucking asses down! <laughs> I remember being in my room like, rule number four, like don't give in, just stay here. He's gonna wear out. And we heard, one of, I heard one of my neighbor friends go downstairs and she was like, oh, sorry, we were yelling fire. And he like reamed her. I felt so bad. But I learned, you know, don't get caught. <laughs> Anyhow, we have great.